know that when we multiply fractions, we want our answer to be in lowest terms. We also know that when we multiply, our numbers get quite large quite quickly, so simplifying can be challenging sometimes. Let's start by multiplying 3 fourths by 12 fifteenths the way we always do. When I multiply my numerators together, 3 times 12 is going to give me 36, and when I multiply my denominators together, 4 times 15 is going to give me 60. 36 and 60 have many common factors, but if I went through, I would find that their greatest common factor is 12. So I'm just going to divide both 36 and 60 by 12. 36 divided by 12 gives me 3. 60 divided by 12 gives me 5. So in lowest terms, my answer is going to be 3 fifths. That's not too bad if you're good with finding common factors, but there is another way we could do it where we can simplify before we multiply. Using that same problem, 3 fourths times 12 fifteenths, we're going to look for common factors in our numerators and denominators. Instead of looking just at the fraction though, we're going to look at combinations of numerators and denominators on the diagonal for common factors. Let's start by looking at 3 and 15. Factors of 3 include 1 and 3. Factors of 15 include 1, 3, 5, and 15. Since they both have a common factor of 3, I can divide both the 3 by 3 and get 1 and the 15 15 by 3 and get 5. Now, instead of using 3 and 15 in my problem, I can use 1 and 5 because I've already simplified. Let's do the same thing looking at the 4 and 12 on the diagonal. Factors of 4 include 1, 2, and 4. Factors of 12 include 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. They both have a greatest common factor of 4, so I can divide both the 4 and the 12 by 4. 4 divided by 4 gives me 1. 12 divided by 4 gives me 3. So instead of using the 12 and the 4 in my problem, I can use the 3 and 1. I can multiply with those simplified values. 1 times 3 gives me 3. 1 times 5 gives me 5. And by canceling out and doing my simplifying first, I come to the same conclusion of 3 fifths that I came to originally.